Hi, I'm Alex and this is Pucks and Paperbacks. Throughout the next couple of weeks I'm going to document myself reading queer graphic novels and reviewing them for you. All of the titles will be linked down below as well as places where you can buy them. And I want to kick it off with Slip. I was sent this for review. It's coming out on June 7th. Today's June 4th. Tomorrow kicks off the Queer Lit Readathon so I wanted to get this in beforehand because I'll be reading a couple graphic novels for that as well. It has suddenly walked away and I can't remember where the hell I put it. While I try and de-stress from that situation I'm going to read Slip. It is a graphic novel about a girl going to art camp and if you know me I love books that I camp. It's one of my favorite tropes. I was sent this by Workman Publishing so thank you to them for sending me a copy. I'm super excited so I am going to get right into it. Hello, it's June 7th. I've taken a couple days to think about my thoughts on Slip and I'm here to review it. As I mentioned it was pitched for fans of This One Summer which is one of my favorite graphic novels and I am definitely going to be pairing these two together. I actually just added them into next week's book recommendation video but that will already be out as you're watching this it was hopefully this week's Tuesday video so I'll have it linked up above. But these go hand in hand so well. This talks about suicide and so a huge trigger warning for that. There are depictions of self-harm and I'll have all of the trigger warnings down below. And I enjoyed this a lot. I like the illustrations. It's told in black and white but when she is having visions it is in red and some of it is in color. For instance there's a scene where they have a color war which is a water balloon fight but with paint instead of water and you see the colors of paint instead of it all being in black and white. So there's some color in it. I would actually like to know the meaning behind that. So I'm gonna go and try and see if there's any like interviews or anything because I thought this was really interesting. This is the illustrator's debut and the author has written another book before this and I really enjoyed it. I love books that are hard hitting so I definitely knew I was going to like this one. This is about a girl named Jade and she is off to a summer art program. But when she's about to leave her mom informs her that her best friend Phoebe attempted suicide and is in a hospital. So this is all about Jay trying to find her creativity and feeling helpless when her friend is in need of her. Jade feels so helpless and alone in this situation because she is at art camp. She doesn't have her phone and she does not have access to Phoebe at all. So when Phoebe sends her a letter it makes her really happy. The best thing I can say to describe this is feeling helpless because she is constantly feeling guilty and just feels like she could have done more and is just shocked at what happened because she feels like she wasn't a better friend to Phoebe because Phoebe never told her about these feelings and really she just feels helpless. Jade is very closed off. She definitely wears her heart on her sleeve and she meets this girl named Mary and Mary is just trying to get into her and try and figure out who she is and get to know her. Jade meets a girl named Mary and there is a summer fling going on between them and I really enjoyed that she just got a little bit of love in between the heartbreak that she's going through and just all of the emotions in general because at summer camp you can feel very alone. I love summer camp settings even though this isn't specifically a camp it's a program but it's also set in like the woods like an outdoorsy area but I was reading some reviews and I kind of agree with some of them because some people were like 
why is there not enough people at this art program? Like there's not really a lot of context. There should have been a lot more development in the book about like what this art camp is but I think if you are someone who is an artist, has gone to art school, or has been in an art program you'll really resonate with this book because she's learning about critiques. Any creative is going to be able to relate to this because she is just trying to figure out what she wants to do but she also is going through so many emotions and honestly as someone who is also very creative I tend to not really get a lot of inspiration when I'm having a bad mental health week or day and it is hard to get creative and burnout exists and a lot of that happens in this book and I really enjoyed it. I recommend it if you're looking for a dark and hard-hitting contemporary graphic novel. I have a link down below. There is some fantastical and magic elements in the book as her creations do come to life but it's more of like a metaphor and that is why I would say it is similar to this one summer but I'll have my graphic novels recommendation video down below if you're interested and maybe you just missed it because I feel like there's a lot of pride content going around on booktube and just a book internet in general. You're probably just swarmed with it if you follow queer creators. So that is my review. Thank you again to Algonquin young readers for sending me a copy of this and now on to my other graphic novels. My next graphic novel is Beetle and the Hollow Bones. I was recommended this a couple times on Instagram and it is a paranormal graphic novel and it has queer rep so let's get into it. Hello, I have another graphic novel to review so let's talk about it. This was Beetle and the Hollow Bones. This is a middle grade graphic novel featuring queer witches, a skeleton, there's a sapphic romance, and we also get some magic. There's also a non-binary ghost named Blob Ghost and the plot is that Blob Ghost is basically trapped in this mall. There was a spell and some necromancy going on. So once our main character finds this out, I totally am blanking on what her name is, but when she finds out she is determined to reverse this and try and get to the bottom of it. But she is just an amateur and she's now learning from her grandmother about magic and they're kind of butting heads. It talks a lot about like generations of witches. Her grandmother thinks that the magic that she practices is the best but she doesn't realize that there's other ones that you can learn from and I really liked the character development there. But just in general this was awesome. I really enjoyed the illustrations and the representation and I just never have really read a book about skeletons and now I want more because this was really fun. And we have a sapphic romance so I'm currently participating in a queer romance readathon and I was able to use it for one of the prompts. I just finished this book and I sound nasally because I cried. <laughs> Every trans memoir always makes me cry. Like honestly any trans book in general that is about like coming to terms with yourself and coming out always makes me cry. Last night I finished Welcome to Saint Hell so let's talk about it. I actually really enjoyed this. There were some moments that make me uncomfortable but then as I kind of got context I felt a little bit more at ease. I want to just point out the trigger warnings because I have a whole list. <laughs> there are trigger warnings for dead naming, misgendering, transphobia, transphobic language, slurs, bullying, dysphoria which is detailed and also illustrated because it's a graphic novel. There's illustrations of chests so if that's something that is going to trigger you as a trans person I advise to maybe just wait a little bit. Um, it's not as graphic like it's very quick but you know everybody's different. And then there's also chest dysphoria that is detailed and we also have an explanation of menstruation. I actually kind of liked how this one was very short and sweet because a lot of the graphic novels I've read that are trans memoirs 
have gone into detail and that is triggering for me. So I actually appreciated that this mentions it, but it's not like going through a whole thing of like, this is why I don't like it. Internalized transphobia, dieting, and an eating disorder, specifically anorexia, and outing. So those are the trigger warnings if you need them. This is basically just his graphic memoir and I love it because it's witty and it also has some instances where it's like you're reading this graphic novel and then his parents are like wait don't put that in so it's actually kind of fun like that. He's a YouTuber which I didn't know. I'll link his channel down below and so he does have some videos about like being trans. He's a comic artist and a comedian and I thought this was really good. I really like the illustrations, um, especially of him. And basically this is him just meeting his younger self and being like, oh, you're dealing with this, but don't worry because it gets better. And I really enjoyed that. I love just reading about trans men that I relate to. I felt like Lewis and I were brothers because he also liked pop punk music. He was a skater. I didn't skate but I hung around people who did and I just felt like some of my childhood memories were in this book and I actually just really enjoyed this. Uh, so I'll have a link down below if you want to pick it up. Uh, it comes out June 7th so when this video is out it's probably already out but do look out for the trigger warnings to my trans folks because the author does state his dead name. Uh, some people are fine with that, some people are not so if that's just something that you're not really interested in totally cool but overall I really liked this. I liked the message of him just going back to his past self and it was awesome. So Highly recommend but do look out for the trigger warnings because it's a heavy one uh, especially just with like the misgendering and dead naming and also just like all of the transphobia <laughs> but I just really liked him kind of like learning about himself and then just like the switch that clicks on that he's like oh I'm trans because he was born in 1988 I believe and so this was actually nice to just see a memoir of somebody that like just honestly didn't have the words and that is so true for many people but it's not true for all trans experiences but I enjoyed this. Highly recommend it. Here I'm watching Moonlight with my patrons. I have a watch party every month. The link is always down below but I really enjoyed it. Welcome back to the vlog. I just finished Across a Field of Starlight and I have thoughts. I enjoyed it. I just thought it was okay and I think that that is mainly because I don't know a lot about astronomy and I don't read sci-fi very often so I just think I'm not the right person for this but I enjoyed some parts of it. It has a lot of trans rep which is awesome. The main characters are non-binary, they're 15 years old and basically it is about Lou and Fazan who meet one day near a starcraft and then they end up really liking each other but Fazan has to go to their ship and so they kind of do like a little long distance and so I liked it for that. Like I really like the subtle trans rep. Um, Fazan is only 15 and they are learning from their leader Nubia and he is trans. So basically we see a trans man as kind of a role model but the way that their relationship is is interesting because it's kind of Fazan learning more about themselves and who they want to be and so it was a good coming of age story like that but the sci-fi is just not for me. I just think I don't know enough about it and I was kind of lost. I would read and it just would not register in my head but I think if you are a sci-fi person you're going to really enjoy this because it is beloved by a lot of people. Two people recommended it to me I believe so a lot of people have enjoyed it. I know my friend Beck at Mooney Reads by Starlight really enjoys it. It's one of their favorites. So even though the sci-fi elements basically just went over my head I enjoyed the relationships and just the story in general. Um, 
And we get to just see two non-binary kids. Fazan's storyline was so good and their character development. Fazan is just learning about themselves and how they want to present. And it was really cool to just see over time. I think if you know more about astronomy, you're going to enjoy this, but I don't. And so it just went right over my head. And now I'm going to read Stone Fruit by Lee Lei, and then I'll review it and come back and wrap this up. <laughs> I just finished Stone Fruit and I have a new favorite graphic novel. I loved this. I absolutely loved this. It was so different than anything I've ever read and I just thought it was awesome. Uh, we have queer ants. There's a whole cast of Asian characters and it is just about Rachel and Bronwyn and they are together. They've been together for five years and it is about them helping Rachel's sister Amanda with her daughter as she's going through a divorce and it was just about like loving a kid so much and also just like relationship issues but it was just amazing. I don't even have words. Honestly, I'm speechless because I thought it was just so awesome. It is great. Uh, Bronwyn is trans, so we have a trans woman, which is cool. And we do have some religious bigotry. And it just kind of talks about so many different things. And I don't want to spoil it. Like, I would just say to go into it knowing it is about queer adults and that is all I'm gonna give you. So thank you to Penguin Stories and Reader of Books for this recommendation. I might have to buy a copy of this because it was just so good. I, oh my god, I loved it. I liked every book equally for different things, but I would say this is my favorite one that I've read throughout this whole video. And that is it for this vlog. Let me wrap it up really quick and just talk about the books I read. First I read Slip which I really enjoyed and it was pitched for fans of this one summer and Stone Fruit is in the same vein. It also has this one summer vibes and Jillian Tamaki actually blurbed it and so if you liked this one summer any of these but this was really good. Uh, I'll leave my Instagram post down below. I did a review for it because the publisher sent me it to post about and I just really enjoyed this. It has mental health, it has magic, and also just talks about friendship and summer love. It was really good. Hello, editing me here because I forgot a book. I read Beetle and the Hollow Bones, which was super good. I highly recommend it. It was a really good paranormal graphic novel. So I needed to include it because I don't know how I forgot about it. I really enjoyed it. Next, I read Welcome to Saint Hell and I really enjoyed this because I just love reading graphic memoirs, especially about trans men. I just really enjoyed the way this was written and told as he is going to his past self and just telling him that things are better and he will get through it and it was really awesome. And then I read Across a Field of Starlight and I was reading reviews and I've come to the conclusion that it is a heavy sci-fi book and that is why I didn't understand it. And that is a lot of the critiques I've seen on Goodreads. And one of my friends told me that Black queer reviewers have said that the representation for the Black character, Lou, made them uncomfortable. So just want to let you know that. But I just thought this was too heavy 
of a sci-fi for me and once I saw other people saying that it kind of just helped me better understand how I was feeling about the book and then I read Stone Fruit my favorite one of this whole video it was awesome I just have never read anything like it and thank you to everyone who recommended me a book for this video whether it was on my community tab or if it was on Instagram I have added a lot of the books that you recommended me I just couldn't get them from my library so if I do a part two of this I'll take your other suggestions into consideration but if you have any other recommendations let me know in the comments and if you have read any of these books let me know if you don't feel accommodating just comment a rainbow emoji so I know you stayed and I will see you next week with the final week of Pride content. I have my last book recommendations video and hopefully another vlog. I'm hoping to get that done but don't quote me on it because I don't know when I'm going to finish it. If you enjoyed this give it a thumbs up and feel free to hit subscribe because I always talk about queer and trans books on this channel. <coughs> Goodbye.